Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Steam Deck and more importantly, taking your Steam Deck, ignoring everything modern it can do, and playing some awesome retro games on it. And today we're going to be talking about the PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD because it's an absolutely outstanding platform and I know a lot of people are going to have questions on how to get it running because there is some slight weirdness as far as all of the different BIOS files go. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down below as well. Because trust me, when a platform has stuff like Castlevania Rondo of Blood on it, you 100% want to be playing it on your Steam Deck. It is just such a great game, and the PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD have a spectacular library. But let's get right into it and talk about what we're going to need. Because the PC Engine CD and the TurboGrafx CD have three different system cards. They are basically like BIOS files with a little bit extra on top. But to unlock the full potential of your Steam Deck playing PC Engine, you're going to want all three of those files. And then you can add whatever games you want in. I do it in a bin queue format. But you'll see syscard1, syscard2, and syscard3.pce. Those are the three files you're going to need to make sure you can run absolutely everything on your Steam Deck. Make sure you have them. I can't link to where they are, but trust me, if you Google it, they're extremely easy to find. And we'll take whatever content we want to put on the Steam Deck and play. And in this tutorial, I use USB. You can FTP over or do other methods. I just find this the easiest because I like playing my Steam Deck docked when I'm not out. That way I have it on my television. So just use whatever dock or USB hub you need. And all you'll need is a USB stick or other sort of way to get those files on formatted in XFAT so that the Steam Deck operating system can see it. Plug it in and suddenly when you go to the desktop mode you're going to see the following menu pop up. It's going to be whatever card you put in and you can mount and open it. And You'll see all the files we just transferred from Windows are here including syscard 1, 2, and 3. We are going to copy those over to the BIOS file of our instance of MUDEC. So wherever you installed MUDEC, that's where you're going to go. I did it on an external micro SD card inside of the Steam Deck. But if we go into the emulation folder, you're going to see a folder called BIOS. You do not need to have a nested folder in here for the emulators to find them. Just copy those three syscard files over to the BIOS directory. And that's all you need to do to make sure that all of your BIOS files are where they need to be. But let's talk a little bit about the games themselves. Everything goes in ROMs, but sometimes Emudeck has multiple folders. You're going to see a folder for Turbo Graphics and Turbo Graphics 16, and you're going to see a folder for PC Engine and PC Engine CD. That's because there's two different regions. If you want TurboGrafx American games to show up under their own heading when you're on the handheld OS for Steam Deck, you can put different regions in different places. I just use PC Engine because that is what I call it. So if we go up here, we're going to see two folders, PC Engine and PC Engine CD. And we're just going to drag and drop each game in its own folder into the PC Engine CD folder. That way, everything is again where it needs to be. If you don't put the file in the right folders the games are not going to ingest correctly so just make sure you're paying attention to your folders I've had a few questions as to why aren't my games showing up and 9 out of 10 times that's because someone put it in a folder adjacent to the correct one once everything copies over you're gonna to go to Steam ROM manager as we normally do and it's gonna give you a warning about the device changing its controls just make sure you read that if it's your first time hit preview hit generate app list and whatever games you decided to add onto your steam deck are going to show up here sometimes with art sometimes not it just depends whether or not it ingests hit save app list when you know everything's there and go ahead and return to gaming mode that's going to bring us right back out into all of those different collections we play a game and we have the bios file here as 3.0 but I will say this runs perfectly and it sounds amazing. So go ahead and listen for 45 seconds and I'll come back and teach you some more stuff. But enjoy.
just looks and sounds absolutely gorgeous, but there are a lot of different settings that we can articulate. And I want to go over those with you. Just because you have PC Engine CD running on your Steam Deck doesn't mean there aren't more things we can do with it. So if we go down to core options, we can manage the core in and of itself. There's more than one way to emulate PC Engine CD. I prefer Beetle, but you can decide whatever it is you want. But if we go to the video tab here, a lot of the things we can change are nested within here. We have a color palette that either has RGB or composite. Now the PC Engine has different color palettes depending on what the output is and you can kind of decide what looks best to you. You may decide one is perfect for every game or you may transition back and forth depending on what game you want to play. Aspect ratio you can leave it on auto for the most part but if we did something like uncorrected aspect ratio and we go back to the game you're going to see that it is shrinking itself down a ton. Again another subjective setting you get to pick what you want. Resolution scaling, I always leave this to auto. You can play around with it. I don't know why you would, but it is obviously an option. Then we have different blending strengths, over scans, and scan lines, things like that. You can show the horizontal overscan if you want to see what's rendering outside of the gameplay area. And we also have a choice of two different audio chips from different revisions. It defaults to that a revision and I do leave it right there and then you'll see we have different things and the most important one is this system card those BIOS files we put on it will default to system card 3 and 99% of the time that's going to be perfectly fine but sometimes you want to see something different so let's go to system card 2 and reset this game right now you will see it's running CD-ROM system version 2.10 if you change that look for that number right there and we're playing Rondo of Blood but it is a game that requires the System 3.0 card to be able to play. But Konami left this little tiny mini game in here to both give you something to play as a joke, but more importantly to tell you that you needed to upgrade your system card. But you can't play this if you don't have a 2.0 card. So if you just want to play around with that, you'll have more fun just to see these things. And for some strange reason, a few games do not run with the 3.0 card. They require the 2.0 card. I don't understand. It must just be a glitch. But if you find something that is a Super CD-ROM 2.0 game not running on 3.0, try to revert it back down to 2. It should work from there. Now another note about the arcade CD games, there's a certain amount of titles that use an arcade card. So long as you have the System 3.0 card in RetroArch in those folders and you're using Beetle, it's going to run the arcade card games perfectly fine. And you'll see here Sapphire, probably the most famous game that runs on that particular setup, is working absolutely outstanding. But take a look at that blimp right there. You did see a little bit of sprite flicker, and I'm going to run it back like seven times so you can see what we're talking about here. There is a sprite limit per line with the PC Engine, so that blimp on the right is definitely flickering. We can play around with some things. If you go into emulation hacks, there is a no sprite limit option you can turn on, which should reduce down some flickering, but may be a little buggy in other games. I leave the flickering there because it's what I'm used to, but if you absolutely hate it, you can play around with that setting. But I will say that this is running exactly as I would expect Sapphire to run, which is to say I'm not very good at it, but everything looks and plays and sounds incredibly. And that's what I'm finding on the Steam Deck, whether in docked mode or if I'm on the go, if I'm playing PC Engine CD games, it is spectacular. And I do own an original Duo R, I own a PC Engine briefcase unit with the separate CD-ROM attachment, and I have a Mr. FPGA as well. And this is doing an excellent job for on the go playing a PC Engine. I don't think I'd want to use anything but Steam Deck. And don't forget, you don't need to back out to the main OS to change games. You can just load new content, go to the folder, PC Engine CD, and pick whatever you want. Just make sure that you are running the Q file. That is what's telling the emulator what to choose. And again, there's just so much fun to be had on the PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD. And my favorite part about the Steam Deck is just how easy it is to get a good image out of it. Because like I said, I own both a Duo R and a briefcase unit. And unless you RGB mod them, they're not going to look great on a modern television. They do look good on a classic 15 kilohertz CRT. But I understand that I am in the minority when it comes to owning multiple old school television, including Sony PVMs. But this is just incredible docked. It is like 99% as good in my opinion as what Mr. FPGA is doing, but it has the advantage over FPGA devices outside of the pocket because you can just pick it up and play. And I love the aspect ratio of the Steam Deck screen and just kind of the overall horizontal layout of holding it versus something like
like the pocket but this just has so much fun to play something like world heroes 2 a neo geo game it's a really interesting look to see it running on the pc engine cd and the steam deck has such a great screen it looks amazing portable and that's the best part about the steam deck so far to me is just being able to compile all these games and take them on the go with me and of course the thing also just plays modern games that's great but there's so many interesting titles to play on PC Engine CD, and what I'm hoping is by teaching you how to do this, you're going to go out and discover games you've never heard of before, or games you haven't played in like 15 to 20 years, and that's what's the most amazing thing about the Steam Deck. But like I said, if you skipped ahead and you're listening to this now and you didn't follow the beginning, you just need to make sure that you have all three of those system cards in the right folder, you need to make sure you have good dumps for the games, and you need to make sure they're nested in the correct folders or else this will not work. But this, in essence, is how you get the PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD set up on the Steam Deck. I love using this No Man's Sky. Starfield here is the outro, but if you follow this tutorial, you'll be playing PC Engine CD games at home. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want an additional one for the Hue Card games. I have not done that yet. But short of that, I'll be back next week with more Steam Deck and I'll have videos for the week as well. But go play it. Bye bye.